Today I'm going to be reviewing why I think the Casio FX115 ES Plus is the best calculator to take and use on your FE exam and just for engineering in general. Please look at the timestamps in the description as there's many functions that this calculator can do, so skip around to reference exactly what you need. Right when you turn it on and take it out of the case actually, you're going to see over here there's tons of different scientific constants and the way you access all these constants you use is you go to shift 7 for constants and then you enter which number. So if for example I want to enter G, it's 39, click equals and then it'll give you the value of G. If I want to do 7 times G, you just do 7 G. And there's a ton of these different constants that you can use. So the next thing you could do is unit conversions. So to do unit conversion, you type in shift eight for conversion, and then you type in the conversion you want to do. So if you want to do meters to yards, I type in zero six, and then it will pop up meters to yards. And let's say I want to do six meters, and I want to know how many yards that is, you do six M equals, and it'll give you six and some fraction. And the reason, another reason why I love this calculator is the display is really easy to use. So over here you have 6 and 214 over 318. You type this S to D, you click it, it gives you it in decimal form, but in like lengthy decimal form, you type it again and it will give you kind of a nicer, pretty version. And you can cycle through any of these. So that's unit conversions and the display and really why I love it. The way you can reference the scientific constants or unit conversions, it says right here, so it says shift seven in the constant and shift eight in the conversion. And really it kind of is self-explanatory. Uh, again, this is all written down in this little manual. I think it's very good for you to read if you just go through it. It really spells out everything. But if not, then just keep watching the video and you'll learn everything else. The next function I wanted to go over was derivatives and integrals. And the way you do that is over here you see it has an integral sign. So you just type in integral. And then to get the x, it's in red. So you do alpha x. And now you have x there. Let's say I want to do 6. I can do 6x plus, let's say, 6. And then you have to enter bounds. So this has to be a bounded integral. It doesn't do uh, non-bounded integrals. And then you just type, it'll take a little second, but you get 144 and that's actually the correct answer. Now, if you want to do derivative, it's in yellow. So you do shift derivative. And then again, you do, let's say derivative of six X and then you type in X, so you have to give the X a value. So let's say X is going to be two and then it'll give you the answer, which is six. And you could get as complicated as you want. You can make this squared by doing right here, the square, you could square it and this is going to give you 24 and so on and so forth. You can even do double integral if you really want. You just type the integral thing twice. You just have to keep track of what's inside and what's outside. But again, because the display is so pretty, it's really easy to keep track of things. The next function I wanted to go over was matrices. So to get to matrices, you actually have to go to mode and then you have to look up where's matrices. So we go to number six, which is matrices. And then you just type in, let's say matrix A, B, C, you can name them. You have up to three different matrices over here. So let's say you want the matrix A, you type in one, and now you can define how big you want this matrix. Do you want a three by three, a three by two, and so on? They have many different options. So I'm gonna say I want a three by three. So I type in one, and here you go. See, it says A, and then you could just type in all the different values. Type in one equals, five equals, and by typing in the equal sign, you're inputting different data into your matrix. So now that you have your matrix set up, you could type AC. So don't worry, it looks like it's cleared, but it's actually still in there. And if you see over here, it says MAT for matrix. That means it's right now doing matrix uh, math. So to get to the matrices, you have to go to shift, and then now you're in the yellow, so you see matrix over here, type in matrix. And now over here, you can say one will give you the dimension of your matrix, two will say, say the data, three will give you matrix A, which is what we want, four will matrix B, five matrix C, six will give you the matrix, the answer, seven will give you the determinant, eight will give you the transpose. So these are actually really helpful. So let's say we wanted to get the transpose of matrix A, right? So we do eight for transpose. Now we want to get to matrix A, shift matrix three, matrix A. So we have transpose of matrix A, close parentheses, equals, and it'll give you the answer. And this is really, really helpful and really powerful. And additionally, what you could do is you could also do use vectors in the same exact way. Let's go to mode. Now, A gives you a vector. I'm gonna name this vector A. It's gonna be a three. Uh, you could do a three or, or a two. I'm gonna make it a three, uh, three vector, type in one. And now I just define my vector, uh, four, eight, five, whatever. Um, and now I have my vector inputted. And if I want to access it, I go to shift, vector, and then again, you could do your dot, you could dimension, um, and so on and so forth. So again, you have to first go to mate, uh, you have to go to mode, type in either uh, six or eight for matrix or vector. And then to access it, you go to shift matrices or shift vector, and that will give you all your options to use. The next really helpful item is tables. So to get to tables, you do mode and seven, that's table. So you go to seven, it's gonna ask you f of x. So it's gonna say, give me a function that you want me to find the values for. 
So let's make it 6x, uh, right? Now it's going to give you gx. You could do up to two different functions over here. So let's say gx is going to be 2x uh, squared, right? So I did 2x alpha x squared over here equals. Now, what do I want to start from? You can start from anything. So you can even start from a negative number. Let's say negative 3. And I want to end at, let's say, 5. And it gives you your steps. Let's say I want to do it in 0.75 steps. And now it's going to list. Here's my x's. Here's my f of, f of x's. Here's my g of x. And it's going to give me every single data point from my starting point to my end point. And it's going to give you my f of x and my g of x. Once you shift, uh, once you go back to on or shift and you reset, you have to redo everything. It doesn't save your answers. But then again, you could just put in 6x and so on and so forth. You could leave g of x empty if you want and it'll just give you one uh, function. But yeah, this is also another really valuable tool. Another tool I used for a few of my classes where I had coordinates on a map that I needed to convert. So let's say I had 103.2528 uh, degrees. So if I had that in degrees, I needed to, and I wanted to get it in degrees, minutes, and seconds. It's very simple. So this button right here gives you that little degree sign. Type in equals, and instantly it will convert. It'll say 103 degrees, 15 minutes, 28.8 seconds. This calculator also does statistics and not just permutations and computations. Those you could do shift, then NPR over here, and then shift and then NCR is over here, and it'll give you a uh, permutation computation. But you can actually do something a little more advanced. You type mode, then you click down to get to the second panel, and then over here, distributions three. And then over here, you have normal, inverse, binomial, and so on and so forth. I haven't used this in a while, so I don't remember every single variable, but let's say you wanted normal, type in one, and it'll ask you your x value, ask you your uh, sigma, ask you your mu, and then it will solve it for you. To get back to normal, you'd have to go to mode and then click one to go back to computation. So that's mode, and you want to go back to computation, which is regular, so you type in one, and that'll give you back to your original screen. This calculator also does series and sequences. You would do, let's say, shift, and over here in the yellow, this is the add everything in the series. And you can type in whatever series you want, so nine, let's say, alpha and x, and it has to be x, x is your value rule because x is down here. So let's say 9x squared plus 3. Then you want to say x from, let's say, negative 3 to positive 3, right? So you put negative 3 over there, positive 3 over there. Type an equal and it'll give you your answer. And then additionally, you go to alpha and get that guy if you want to do multiplication, add everything together. This calculator also does prime factorization. So if you wanted to factor 1014, you type an equal, so now you have the answer, but you wanted to get the prime factorization of that answer. And this works for anything, any answer you get. You type in shift fact, and it'll give you two, three, and 13 squared, and that's a prime factorization. This calculator also converts Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. You can convert either way. The way you do that, you do type shift, and then over here you have P-O-L for polar, R-E-C for rectangular. So if you wanted to get the polar coordinates of something, type shift, P-O-L, now it appears there, Let's say we wanted to get 45 and 45. So we know the square root of two, and then you say comma over here. So a shift over here with the end parentheses is a little comma sign. Square root of two, close parentheses, gotta make sure the parentheses is outside, and equal, and it'll give you R2 and 45 degree angle. And this works the other way as well. If you want to go, you just type shift REC rectangular, and let's say it was two, and we know 45. So let's say two and then shift, comma, 45 degrees, type in a little degree sign, close parentheses, equal, and should give me, yeah, 1.14 x, and my y value is 1.414, and that's actually the square root of two, which is what we input originally. This calculator also solves quadratic formulas as well as cubic formulas, and two other that you'll use in linear algebra, and I want to show you how to get to them. So you type in mode and five for equations to get to the pre-input uh, equations, if you want to solve a quadratic equation, type in three, and that will give you A, B, and C. I know it's a matrix, but this is just the way input. So you put in, let's say, one for your A, five for your B, and six for your C. Type in enter, and it'll solve it for you. X1 is negative two, X2 will be negative three. It'll give you your X minimum value, your Y minimum value of your function, if you would actually graph it. And then you go back to your input, and you can put in various input. Again, to get back to the regular menu, you type in mode and go one for computation. This calculator also can solve for inequalities, just like we did quadratic formulas. All you have to do is type in mode and you click down to get to the more and type in one for inequalities. So it's one. And then again, it has one, two or two. 
This is if you have x squared or x cubed. So let's say we had x cubed and we had an inequality. So you type in two and now it gives you, is it less than zero, greater than zero, less than equal to, greater or equal to. And again, all you have to do is type in the number you want to solve, type in all the data, and it actually has the formula that you're using below, which is kind of helpful. So let's say three, two, five, nine. I don't know what it's going to be. Type in enter and I'll give you, x has to be less than negative 1.25. And to get back to your regular, you go to mode again, and one, computation. I want to go over all the modes this calculator has and what we covered and what we didn't. So we did computation too complex. That just allows I as a complex number to be in your calculator and show up as a solution instead of error. I didn't do statistics. Explore that if you're interested. Uh, I didn't do base n because that's not something I really use. I always use base 10, but it's pretty self-explanatory. We did equations. We did matrices, tables, vectors. Inequalities, we, we did verification. We didn't do it. I'm going to just explain right now. And three distribution we did already. So two, verification, type in two, true or false. So what this does essentially is it tells you, you type in an equation. So let's say eight is equal alpha equal is equal to nine. That is false obviously. But what this does is you type in that equation, type in equal, and it'll tell you if it's true or false. This is helpful if you're doing proofs and you have some long complex proof with like, let's say cosine, uh, cosine of four of, you know, 45 and you want to know is cosine 45 alpha equal, is it equal to let's say tangent of sine uh, 45, let's say, right? And you type in equal and it's not equal. And you could solve many different things to say if it is or isn't. But yeah, that's really why it's useful. I don't use it that often. And again, to get back to your regular, you do mode one and that's back to regular. I wanted to show you that besides for the mode function that does control almost the entire calculator, you can shift between things, let's say degrees and radians or scientific mode, which I personally don't really touch. But so you, the way you get to it is shift setup and over here degrees, radians, scientific. And this is just a normal and this is just a way to, you know, use your calculator to make it exactly how you want it. You could do the contrast and display. You could affect those as well. This is just how the calculator shows. But for the most part, I keep it the way I get it. Thanks for sticking around if you made it this far. And I hope this video was helpful as I did pick up this thing over many years. I did not learn it overnight. Uh, there is the user guide, which is definitely helpful. I recommend you reading it as nerdy as it sounds. It's really helpful. Uh, yeah, thanks. If you have any questions, please leave it in the description. If you think that I missed something, definitely tell me about it uh, so other people can learn about it. I will respond in the comments uh, as soon as I can. And thanks again. And as always, stay civil.